Hello everybody, welcome back to Black Medium. It's been a little bit of a, a hiatus. I, I blame EJ over here. I did, I did not do a thing. Like I said, I've, I'm, been on, I've been on my grind. I'm Gold Will, <laughs> and this is, of course... Electronic Jack, a.k.a. Linwood Storm from the Black Grindhouse Podcast. Alright, and today we're going to be talking about a subject that's uh, near and dear to my heart. We're gonna be talking the do's about do's and don'ts of writing a black character. Yes, because I'm I'm gonna love this one. It's like I'm, I'm prepped. The reason I chose this topic is because recently the um, Final Fantasy VII remake trailer just dropped, and there was a little bit of a you know, let's say concern about Barrett's voice. It was too black for him, too Negroish. And this was actually a controversy when the game released. Barrett is an analog to Mr. T. So he was loudmouthed and sweary. Mr. T is, like, copied in so many mediums as far as being a basis for a black character. It's I crazy. Mean, I mean, shit, that's like the only mainstream black person they probably know. <laughs> Other than Mike Tyson. Yeah, Mike Tyson, that's He's right. He's got Balrog. Balrog, from so. <laughs> Street Fighter. Yeah. His name's actually Bison in Japan. But yeah, Mike Bison. If if you guys didn't get that, um, yeah, it. I, I guess they took Mr. T and they made him sweary and all that other stuff. And it, you know, it was kind of a poo poo moment back then. But uh, people are kind of concerned that they're doing such a faithful translation of, of the character's accent. I, I I'm unfamiliar with the the Final Fantasy franchise. I have not played a single game. Really? Really, I've not played a single game. Uh, I there was this one game. I think it's by the creators. It's like this this bullet time John Lewis, a similar format, but um, the name escapes me at the moment. But yeah, I've not. I wouldn't know where to start. Um, they're all games on their own. You don't have to play like one to get the other. So they're they're pretty much standalone. Yeah, they're all standalone. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I'd I'd recommend well my favorite one is eight, but I'd recommend probably ten. That one's really easy to get into. It's so I can just jump into it without knowing anything about the lore. Correct. Because they're all standalone games. You should do okay, that. Okay, so I, I can I can do that. I can't do that with Metal Gear Solid, right? Uh, nope, you can not. Because I, like I said, the only game that, I, and I actually have it right here with me in my Xbox collection, which is open at the moment, um, Metal Gear Solid 2, I've only played that, and the, uh, what's that, uh, Metal Gear Revengeance, I believe that's what it's called. Rising Revengeance. Metal Gear Revengeance. Yep, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. That game was amazing. <laughs> I, was, I, I just loved it. I'm sorry. I wasn't into it, really. I heard a lot of the fans of the, the franchise wasn't into it, but that was my first Metal Gear game. So it was robots, samurais, slicing up people. You had me. You are a sad person. I'm, a, I'm, I'm simple. I'm simple. Indeed. I like, I like what I like. I don't got to type. <laughs> Anyways, so let's uh let's talk uh you know some of the characters. Um what what are uh what are some black characters? We'll start off like this. What what are some black characters in just media in general that you think are good examples of written black characters? Just in general? Yeah, yeah. That is a tough one. Um other than my own characters, of course, I'm not going to toot my own horn on this podcast. But talk your um, shit, talk your shit. Nah, nah, nah. But um, I <laughs> static, static. That, that's that's the most obvious one because yeah. he's basically b Black Spider Man. Indeed, I mean, we all grew up with Static Shock, and I mean, Little Romeo was our hero. Yes. Mm. No. No. Ah. No. What I'm not talking. Uh, I'm talking about the theme song. Okay, you're talking about the theme song. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I did not care for that theme song as much as others did. The original, <laughs> no lyrics. I loved it, and it was 
straight to the point. Got to beat, beat, beat. Got to beat, 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 beat. The 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 the, uh, the Romeo one that was, I, I don't know, it just made it feel corny. Man. And then they had, they had uh, I think Sack was in the episode at one point. Man, I think it was like this basketball team of superheroes. You're corny. Fuck you. Nah, about nah, some fucking... nah, nah. This cast is over. Nah, you go. You go. <laughs> fucking disrespect that opening theme. Are you serious? Who's the best rapper, Hobson? <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, you're fucking canceled. <laughs> no, but the, the, the Static Soxo had a lot of great black characters. I think that's why I keep coming back to watch episodes. Even though I've seen every episode at least three times, especially um, uh, Mr. Hawkins. Yeah, yeah, I like but Mr. Hawkins especially. Ebon, Ebon was a great black villain. Oh yeah, that that was something else. Which I I don't believe he was even in the comics. I don't recall. I don't think a lot of. Those However, that were. no, uh, um, a few of them were. A few of them were. The uh, what's 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 the the Human Torch dude? Uh, you got me, but. Uh, Skidmark, um, he no. Yeah, he was he. He's in the comics. He's in the. I think he's a racist in the comics. Actually, doesn't you know surprise me. Yeah, but um, yeah, that Static Sock is another. Static Sock is one example of um, you know, well written black characters. Um, I want to say the Proud Family, but the Proud Family had some stereotypical characters. You think so? Yeah, yeah. It, what's that? The what's that? The water boy, that was obviously the, the stereotypical gay black kid, and he had the father who was ashamed of him. Huh. Not a lot of people picked up on that. Surprisingly, <laughs> I mean, it, it goes over our heads. Even yeah, there was a lot. There was a lot of humor that went over our heads, especially the episode with the. Uh, you know, Penny Proud was doing karate with her friends, and you had the ode to Jim Kelly. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Because we're we're talking about black characters in general, not just um, cartoons and yeah, 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 movies and video games. Okay. Um, <laughs> His name is Ebon. Just in case you didn't get it, that means Ebony. Ebony. <laughs> <laughs> in case you didn't get that, I didn't get it as a kid. I didn't get it as a kid. But okay, so I said this. On a podcast that I'm about to release, um, I did not grow up wanting diversity because I, I I watched a lot of shows that had diverse black characters in them, hmm. like Fresh Prince of Bel Air, Good Times, um, Martin. trying to think of another show, Sister Sister, Martin, the Jamie Fox show, Taina. I didn't even watch Tiny. I, I didn't care as much for the Jamie Foxx show was pretty good. And Gar- oh, what's that? What's that? What's that one show with the the Brandy? What's that one show with Brandy? You got me. Uh, it I, had the spinoff with Monique. Nope, drawing a blank. I mean, I I didn't uh, watch a lot. Of Yo, Ray J. Ray J. was uh, in it too. I didn't. Oh, one on one is another good one, by the way. One on one was amazing. That was actually really good. Uh, did, but, you, did you like the last episode? Like it got weaker uh, near the uh, final seasons. But I'm not sure if I watched the final seasons. I just caught it on BET. It was Moisa? really good. Moisa, Moisa, that's Moisa. the name. Okay. Moisa, Moisa was 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 uh, great until they made the the black father a cheater. I mean, so they they, they, they revealed that. They revealed that the father cheated on the mother and had a secret child, and that's that's where Ray J came into play. And I was like, okay, you had you had a you had a good father figure, and you're just gonna make him a cheater so you can get higher yeah, ratings. Black men don't cheat. That's just fucking unrealistic. We just slip up. We just slip up from time to time. <laughs> just fall right in the pussy. But yeah, like like I said, I I grew up with a lot of black characters who. I, I didn't really feel like they were lacking any significant um, traits. Like James Evans was the quintessential. Uh, I, I think I pronounced that right. I'm, I'm a little bit tired, yeah. but uh, he was the black father of America to me. Not Bill Cosby. All right, I wasn't feeling the Cosby show. I wasn't. I was feeling uh, a different world. Hmm. Which again, another another black show with black characters who 
were all they had their own personalities. You had uh, Dwayne Dwayne Wayne who was a a nerd, yeah. yep. got with the hot girl like Dwayne Wayne. Now, uh, um, what's what's that so with Urkel? Uh, I say that so with Urkel, family like family the, the Urkel show, the Urkel yeah, show. Yeah, the Urkel. <laughs> I mean, it became the Urkel show during the last <laughs> season. The Urkel show. Those final uh, seasons were just Urkel, Urkel, Urkel. Like Urkel went to space. Yeah, it, but it, you had you had Urkel. Family, and, family matters. Um, I, is Urkel? Is Family Matters really? Yeah, a, it's Family Matters. A black cell? Is it really a black cell though? It's black. It's just I found it's got black characters, but I never really consider it a black cell. Like. I found, like, the first time I watched Family Matters, I thought it was really funny. But upon rewatching it, it just, it was corny. Oh, my God. I mean, it's just goofy. That's what I, that's what I think of it now. It's just goofy. Like, every time. Like, there's no, um, there's no message. There, like, oh, there were messages. Absolutely messages. Yeah, here and there. Because you have the, the, the cop episode. Yeah, but, you had a couple episodes. It's just it, it wasn't. It was like Diet Fresh Prince because no, it, please don't compare it to Fresh Prince. Fresh they literally Prince had James Avery, they they had James Avery go on the set. Yeah, they're in the same universe. Yeah, there's actually a black. There's actually a. It's not a black sitcom universe, but it's got a bunch of sitcoms in the universe. You didn't hear that. And. Boy Meets World is also in the same universe as Family Matters. Really? Did they cross over? Let me look it up to confirm because... Let's see. Oh, yeah. It looks like... Yep, crossovers. Oh, wow. There's an article with... uh, Yeah. By by Bustle. 11 awesome TV show crossovers from the 90s. You totally forgot. Boy Meets World crossed over with Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Full House crossed over with Family Matters. Uh, wow. Okay, I didn't. My goodness. I mean, that was back when, you know, stations weren't so so uh, stingy. You know, one show I did, I thought had really well written. Oh, Keenan and Kel. You know what? That, that's another one. That's another one. I love Keenan and Kel. Uh, I don't. Really. It's 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 goofy, but it's intentionally goofy. It doesn't go overboard. Like it's it's kids humor, but um, it's not on the level of a Drake and Joss. But it was. It's written by the same dude. Really? Yeah, Dan Schneider. Yeah, that's why I I don't I. I don't particularly. You don't like Dan Schneider? Nope. No, his style got really whack. I mean, let me see. It got, it got, it got, it got worse over time. I will agree. Let me see. Do but Drake and Josh, I'm sorry, Drake and Josh is a classic. The first. I don't two remember seasons. much about Cousin Skeeter. The first two seasons. The 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 third season of Drake and Josh was really horrible. I don't remember much from the third season. Yeah, it's because they 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 fucked up everything. But okay, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air did cross over with the Jeffersons, so yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. They had a uh, Sherman Hensley on. Yeah, when they were, I think it was a couples therapy. Yeah. Episode and uh, yeah. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Uh, let me see a, a show. But yeah, I thought, that, that, that just goes back to go on. A show I thought had uh, some pretty uh, pretty good characters was Girlfriends. I thought that show was excellent, to be honest. It's been a long time since I've seen that show. I watched it like the only thing I remember about it is the chick who now plays in Blackest as the mother, Tracy Ellis Ross. Blackest is another show. You know what? Blackest, Blackest is another show. I need to actually like binge watch that because it's like the only black sitcom on TV now. <laughs> well, the only one worth watching. Yeah, I'm not sure if the game back or. Uh man, I, yeah, I didn't. I didn't like the, the game. It was. It was interesting but it wasn't like i gotta watch this now blackest whenever it's on i I watch it because it's funny and there's a lot of episodes that i've missed and every episode that i've missed and i I catch up on i'm like wow it like i don't remember there being a bad episode i just don't so it's like everybody hates chris yeah and that's another one everybody hates chris pretty uh pretty good stuff a, a show that finally, like, a, another another good example of a uh, black father figure. Very, very. 
I actually really like Julius. That was an interesting portrayal by uh Yeah, he, like like I say he Dickens. doesn't he doesn't go overboard when he's angry, you know. Um he's well composed. You ain't going to jail. I'm going to jail. <laughs> you know, that that was fire. I was like, geez. In your dreams. I'll be there. <laughs> While you're taking a sour, I'll, I'll be, be there. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm playing? Bro, that was actually really funny. I so I, I just feel like you know what the uh when we're in control of these characters, that's when they come out all right. And that's why we're doing the do's and don'ts because you know yeah. this is there's people who don't you know actually know about writing black characters and and then I um I was in my indie game group um just earlier this week and there was a post on the whole Barrett thing and whatnot and a lot of people in there because indie game development is majority like not black. I'm not gonna say yeah. white. It's definitely people from we were all like the, the world. Only, only black folks on YYG. One of like six, <laughs> but oh, I was about to say four. Okay, <laughs> I think there was a Kazel existed. I guess. Uh, yeah, he did, and uh, I have him on Facebook. I had you, him. I, you have him on Facebook. I had him. Oh, you have. He, he's gone. I don't know. I, I should. At. I should be able to find him because I. I stole his last name. Kazel Storm. <laughs> yeah, I stole that. That's that's where I got Linwood Storm from. I, I took my middle name and then added his last name because I, I was Storm. Wow. Okay. I like that name. I'm gonna take it. Oh yeah. God, I'm a stereotype. You ain't shit. But um, yeah, I was on that group. And a lot of the discussion was really confused on both the idea of a black character even being played stereotypically. You know, a lot of people don't get why that would be an issue because, I mean, can you guess? So, you know, there's that. Uh, and a couple of the comments, one of them was pretty interesting, and I'm, I'm looking for it right now because it definitely was like, here it is. Okay. By Eli El Ojeda. Ojeda. It's a Venezuelan name, so I'm, <laughs> I, I'm not going to get the pronunciation correct. I'm sorry about that. Just butchering it. Uh, I'm sorry. So, anyways, and his comment was, name just one, all caps. One fucking black person who doesn't talk well like a black person and that's fucking good but I mean it's part of their identity it's just accent it's like denying Latino accent or Asian accent it's part of who you are as a person and there's nothing wrong about it damn it the SJWs are fucking up our games again and I have to point out that accents generally come from you know learning a language that isn't your native language so or environment i mean slang is a thing that all of us use but he's talking no, i mean like, like maybe like there so there are there's a stereotype it, it's like this this uh stereotype that uh i don't know how to exact exactly uh explain the accent but it's basically just a southern accent just you know yeah. Black voice with a southern accent. That's all it is. Yeah, southern speak. I mean, and there's uh, white people who sound like that too from the south. That's what I mean. It, it's And there are white people who try to fake like they're a black person from the south, Iggy Azalea. We don't talk about her. <laughs> You're the one who said you would drink her bath water. I did, did not say that. I said I listened to her music. No, we still have that on record. No, we don't. We do. But lost incoming. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, so I, I just commented like I guess I don't exist. You know, because what does a black person sound I mean I guess he's yeah, technically but people right. have told you that you didn't sound like a black person and people have told me that I didn't sound like a black dude. You so. don't sound black on the phone. Uh, was I supposed to say, hey, y'all? 
Hey, what's I'm, up? I'm here for the interview. Was I was I <laughs> answer the phone like yeah? Yo, uh, it'll be your own people. I've heard that from a black woman once. Now, I didn't. I didn't. I sound like a white dude. Oh, what makes me sound like a white dude? Because well, I speak properly. You you talk white. I talk. I talk white. What's that? What's that scene from the Boondocks? Why do white people sound like this? <laughs> <laughs> like. That's how I, I don't I, I, I see that people are grappling with this this idea. So let's let's go through some do's and don'ts of writing black characters. So let's start with some do's. What what do you do when you're writing a black character? Um What do I do when I'm writing a black character? It depends on the the, the personality. Well just give us one do. I, I don't know, like I I've been around so many black people it's like I know black people who could be compared to white people. White people can be be compared to certain black people I know. Um, I mean, yeah. so it really depends. As, as a writer, it really depends on the story that I'm writing because I'll write a all of all the all of the main black characters that I write. They definitely have a sense of uh, sense of who they are as a black individual. Um, and what I mean by that is I don't mean speaking slang or I, I mean just just recognizing that, hey, I'm black, but this isn't a defining feature. You know, I, I don't, I'm trying to I'm trying to organize my thoughts at the moment because it, it's definitely not the voice. You know, I, you can have a deep voice and you, you can. You can uh, be heavily sarcastic and swear a lot. Th that's not just for black dudes, you know. And that, that's what I said when I brought up uh, Prototype Two. Prototype Two, the uh, main character, what's his name? The grungiest voice. Yeah, who's who's played by that Latino-looking dude? Like I said, he's probably mixed. He is probably mixed, to be honest. But the uh, the protagonist, whose name is James Heller, I a lot of a, a lot of people had a problem with him, but I I loved his character. I loved his attitude because he was like this tough black dude, military trained, dangerous powers. Um, he was heavily sarcastic. He's he- he's heavily sarcastic. Um, he doesn't trust anybody. I, I just felt like that's a character that I would write. So even though the writer may have been white, who's to say that James Heller wasn't originally, you know, white? He could have been originally white and he could have had the same attitude, but, you know, now he, he's black so because they wanted to switch it up. What's the do in this? Um, don't rely on stereotypes. Don't rely on heavy stereotypes. Well, that's, a, that's a don't, but... All right, I'll I'll <laughs> I'll start with a do, I guess. All right, so for because my roommate actually See, asked I, me about I, this I, question. I don't want I don't want to condense everything, but go, go on, go on. My roommate asked me the question, you know, how to write black characters. And I was just I gave him some pretty general tips. One of the tips was take risks. You know, uh, write the character how you feel. You would write any other character. Uh, because I feel that a lot of people are walking on eggshells when they're writing other ethnicities, specifically black people, because we're, we're very vocal. And I feel like they don't take risk with the character's personality because of the fear of being called out on some sort of, uh, you know, fuck ups that they may have done. I mean, so, but that happens no matter what. And that's what I'm saying. And and a lot of times you get these, these black characters who are just not fully realized as other characters because the writers... Riri. Right. But, oh, I, I just made him mad. I, I mean, <laughs> Riri has her own issues. And actually, I don't think any of her issues stem from not taking risks. I think her issues in her writing stem from... Just, just not being consistent with 
the world's rules. And, How so? Uh, I'll get into that in just a second. Uh, uh, so, yeah, that's uh, that's that's the one thing you should do. You just, just take risks on the character. Write write the character as you would write the any other character. Uh, the only thing you would need to uh, be aware of is cultural differences, like actual cultural yeah. references if you're going to make them. And I feel weird saying this, but ask your resident black person about certain cultural references you feel like you want to make. So, yeah, but your, res- your resident black person may be very ignorant and the very stereotype we're trying to avoid seeing Well, in the entertainment. <laughs> Look, I'm not going to say discriminate for a fucking don't, but... Either way, ask, <laughs> ask one of your your black friends. You know about don't don't just make your black character love Soul Train, all right? Because you know that's not on these days. But anyways, that that's one of my. I, I, I just I just want to say a good a good movie to watch that goes over this is uh, Hollywood Hollywood Suffle. Starring um, Robert Townsend, kind of goes over the stereotypes of how black people are portrayed in Hollywood, and it, it's I'm not going to spoil it. It's a very good film. It's it's indie, but it's also satire. I don't consider it a parody like most people do, but yeah, it's definitely worth watching. All right, and what I... This, well, I, I just want to point out there's one there's one scene. Um, if you if you YouTube black acting school scene, um, it shows this. Well, I, I don't think that's the exact title, but it shows this guy. He's he's speaking jive and he's talking slang, but then he switches it up after the scene ends, and he's like, "All right, he's got this British accent, thick, like very well spoken." And why 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 couldn't the character talk like that in this supposed movie? Oh, he's so he's Idris Elba. <laughs> now, Idris Elba doesn't take um, stereotypical roles. I mean, he doesn't take stereotypical roles, but he can adopt an American accent really easily. Again, if you if you watched The Wire, of course you didn't. I have not watched The Wire. Yeah, of course you didn't. You wouldn't know the guy's from Britain. Well, I I know he's from Britain because I, I mean, saw Pacific Rim. But I mean, like if that was your first introduction to the guy like it was for me I, I didn't know he was British until I saw him in interviews I'm just like he's British whoa <laughs> it's like whoa. the majority of black actors in the mainstream are British yeah that's because they can't get roles over there at least that's some little whispers I'm hearing I, I, I don't know about that because when it comes to media over there media over there seems a little bit more diverse uh-huh. from what I from what I saw growing up like I said, it was, it, was, it was just a couple of whispers I heard about the culture over there, which is why there's a ton of British, like, black actors coming here. That's just, that's just why. Yeah, but where does that leave the American black actors? Still struggling. I mean, I guess British actors have an exotic accent, man. Maybe they're just better actors. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and what I was saying about Reeby Williams is... Her character, while being obnoxiously perfect, uh, suffers from the world not punching down on her quite hard enough. So she has nothing to react off of. Like, for example, she steals from MIT, which is a big fucking deal. It would get anybody thrown in jail. And instead, MIT offers her not only amnesty, but a position in like one of their programs. And this doesn't give Ruby Williams anything to react off of because there's no trouble to think about there's no situation it's like oh shit i stole a bunch of technology and i got away with it and they're rewarding me for it and i yeah think, there's a name for that what's it called i believe we call it a marisu no 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 what's, what's it called um affirmative action that's the name oh jesus christ no that's <laughs> that is not the name oh so you hacked into our database that is not what and you're called. egress that's not affirmative action. Like that's, not, that's not affirmative. That's not what affirmative <laughs> action is. Anyways, 
<laughs> yeah, I think Riri's writing problems come from the fact that because Bendis writes like a total child, he he doesn't write a a realistic rule set <clears throat> for her character to react off of. So yeah. Alright, let's so let's get into a don't. That's a good question. Um Don't be afraid to discuss taboos that you observe in the black community, even if you're not a part of the black community. I don't co-sign this. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's, it's important. Quentin uh, uh, Tarantino does all the time. Uh, I don't know, So here's man. an example. Here's an example. There's a movie by this white dude, Ari Aster. It's an indie film and a drama. It's called The Strange Thing About the Johnsons. Have you heard of it? I've heard of it. Actually, I heard there's a there's so there's many memes about interesting, it. Interesting uh, plot developments that go on in that film. Yeah, so it was it was made in 2011. So I'll just spoil it. Um, the son is raping the father, and uh, what else? What else? Yeah, basically the theme is incest and rape and molestation, but they they play it in reverse to make things a little bit more interesting. But they used a black family to do so. Yeah. Black people had a problem with that, even though that that child molestation is very prevalent in the black community. So was rape. Yeah. And there was also complaints that, hey, you're a white director. Where do you where do you believe you have the right to you know discuss this and use us to to uh you know convey your message? And that's where I'd have to give a little bit of pushback because I mean even with the best intentions, uh I'm not sure, but then again, it's all fair game, you know. You I, I feel saying. like as as a writer, as a filmmaker, you just you need to you you can't be worried about pushback. You can't be worried about oh no, I may offend this person or I may offend this person. For uh, I just I just think Moonlight that... Moonlight was heavily criticized because it portrayed gay black males. I mean, at such a young age, and I, I, again, it needed to be discussed, and no one else was discussing it. Well, I'm just saying that be careful what you think you observe, because it may not be, you know, what it is. Because that's that's the type of, like, say someone who looks at the black community from the outside, and all he reads is like. Breitbart headlines or some shit, but they're they're reporting on shootings in the black community and someone just yeah someone someone did something like that. Uh, yeah. Ben Shapiro uh, wrote me. a book and fuck Ben Shapiro. <laughs> Either way, before, before we continue, I just want to quote this from Wiki about the uh, strange things about the, strange thing about the Johnsons. The film the film also garnered controversy for its portrayal of an African-American family by white filmmaker director Ari Aster stated that the, co- the color of the family isn't important. We certainly assume that casting black actors in a film that tackles such transgressive themes would create something of a stir. And it would be a lie to say that we weren't hesitant, especially as many people were advising us against the decision. And this is what um, Billy. Oh, hold on. No. Okay, I gotta get my glasses. So the next ses- next section says, as an African American incest incest and molestation survivor, Malcolm Harris of the Harrington Huffington Post. <laughs> wow, Harrington my Post? screen my screen is very dirty. Huffington Post wrote that Billy Miles' portrayal was brilliant, and that we should be applauding the fact that someone has finally shown the courage in proposing the question, "What if?" What if these strange events were happening behind the closed doors of the Smiths, the Rosenbergs, the Mortimers, oh, that's a Jew name, and the Harris? 
what if these strange things were happening to me? Well, I think that's a good point that he simply just wanted to cover the topic. Yeah. So that that is a good point. I'm just saying be careful of the assumptions you make. You know, be careful of the assumptions you make that you think that you can just make a statement on it from outside observing. If you're going to I would say if you're going to make a, st- a statement specifically relevant to a certain community then gather people from that community and get their uh, opinion on it. Yeah, I was just about to say that like make sure if you're going to talk about a topic inside of a community that you talk to people inside the community first before embarrassing yourself. You know, uh otherwise you're going you're going to get blowback. That, that's that's pretty much what's going to happen and a lot of the blowback may be disingenuous you know because who knows you may not have had any specific ill intent for... I mean we live in such a culture that rages at everything Ooh, I want to talk about cancel culture but not this cast <laughs> because I have a lot why is of... Iron Fist white uh, I have a lot of the comic books. Say. This is a perfect example to make him half Asian. Uh, no, that's not how he was in the comic books. Oh yeah, I have, I have a ton <laughs> of things to say about cancel culture. It's the most annoying bullshit that we have currently going on. But like I said, not this cast. All right, another do. All right. All right. So do pick expansive roles. Um, you know, this is something I talked about. Uh, over a year ago, and it's why I even started this uh, this podcast. Uh, black people don't get very many diverse roles. I- I'm not talking about diversity in the sense of it's a black person, shut up. I'll talk about diverse roles as in this character is, I don't know, some sort of space pirate prostitute uh, on Mars or something. You don't, or it could be as simple as having an autistic character. Or anything... I'm not sure if an autistic... I mean, I guess that's a diverse role. You don't really see many autistic black characters. There was the Power Rangers movie, which they, they made Billy black and had him be a little bit on the spectrum. Um, There's Symmetra from Overwatch, if you count Indian women as black. Yeah. Symmetric, I, it really, it really depends on the story you're telling, but yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Um, give give them some more different because, it, and this goes back to the writing of characters how you see fit. Roles aren't tied to certain races, uh, and I feel like there there's a little bit of trouble in our community because we just we don't write characters in these types of roles i mean no black medieval knights or anything like that i kind of want some of those some some black greeks can we get that it's a little weird that Zack snyder is the only one i mean we have we have creators doing that but we really don't support them unless they're working for dc or marvel or a a huge studio we'll talk about that can of worms (laughs) because i have a serious problem with Japanophilia, and it's kind of weird. We co-opt other cultures, but when someone tries to co-opt our culture, we get so defensive. Oh no 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 no! It's 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 a little worse because Japanophilia, you know, Japanophiles. Oh my God! It's anime. That sounds it's so not, dirty. I mean, it is dirty. And I put up a status about it just today, where I called, you know watching anime what it is one i don't even like using the word anime because it's stupid it's not even an english word and it means animation so just say yeah car- that's just, all it means just say cartoon now i i use it to differentiate between traditional japanese animation you know eastern animation and western animation because the majority of people understand that you know uh, that's how it's marketed i just say japanese animation because i want to i want to remove that word honestly from the english lexicon it's just, yeah, but that's not going to happen. It's stupid. It's you look really up anime stupid. in any dictionary, it's, it's going to say something about Japan. And and that's really dumb because what it implies is that Japan just makes this 
this otherworldly art that nobody else can touch, and it, it kind of puts them on an altar. This that... isn't an anime. It wasn't made in Japan. Exactly, and you get that <laughs> weird stupid. Avatar is not an anime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get that stupid mindset that, oh, it's not made in Japan, so it's not good as anime. It's close. I've never felt any feelings from cartoons, only anime. I've actually had somebody say that to me. It was actually really stupid. It is. W- w- were they black? It was in Jubin, so I think they were. Take away the black card. It's just, a, like, like I said, I have a lot of things to say about Japan Affiliate, but we'll, we'll, we'll get into that some other time. Yeah, that's a huge topic to discuss. Yeah, fuck you, weeps. That's all I can, gotta say. Alright, uh, so we were on do's. No, we're on a don't now. So, come on, give us a don't. Uh, You've had a day to think about this. I did, but I, I don't have my list with me. Um, I was gonna say something about the sexualization of black women. Don't just don't just sexualize them, all right? It's it's okay to write black characters who are comfortable with their sexuality, who express their sexuality, but don't just use them as a uh, quote unquote Bond girl. Oh yeah, that's that's also a future topic too. So there there's this film. Um, I'm always talking about films, by the way. There's this film, Gloria Hendry. Mm-hmm. She plays in this old James Bond film, and her character is so stupid. And she, like, she, she's, she tries to double cross James Bond. James Bond ends up having sex with her. Um, she ends up getting killed, and that's basically her role. And I'm like, how do you go from Black Belt Jones being this badass black woman who's kicking ass with Jim Kelly to being in this subservient role with? A white dude. No offense, James Bond. I love James Bond movies, but it it, it was just, oh, I I get it. It's more than that because James Bond movies and Bond girls have always been like that. But just feels you really annoying when anyone, it's a black woman. It does. It does. It, it does. I'm sorry. Feel- like I I get it. James Bond objectifies every woman, but when when it's a black woman, I'm I'm like. And it's like no thought was put into writing her character. Like, there are Bond girls who actually serve a role that better the James Bond character. She served no role whatsoever. I'm like, ah. Yeah, that's a... Uh, yeah, that's a thing. That that's, um, that's an unfortunate thing that happens, especially a lot with black women, because... I mean, you got black and then you have women. Those, those are two things that a lot of the writers in current Hollywood have kind of an issue with. At least they're yeah, getting they're, better they're, with they're it. They're basically using black women as an object, a sex object. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. If, if you have more than one black woman in the movie and one's a sex object and the other is... is it's his own character, then, okay, fine. You know, no white movies, white, white female characters like that. But to just pick a black woman for the sake of her being exotic in a, in a uh, white-centric story, I, I, I find that disgusting. It's just a little bit disgusting. Just I find, I, I find it just as disgusting as if uh, a... a if a white woman was in a black movie and, you know, folks are praising her for for being a, a sex symbol or whatever. Mm-hmm. She could be Asian. It, or it used to be Latin for a while. The, the, it used, for a while, there was always this Latin girl. <laughs> um, I think Jennifer Lopez. And what's the other chick? Eva Mendes. Yes. Yeah, her and there's one more. It, it, Eva Longoria. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But there's one more. <laughs> Michelle Rodriguez. But she's not a sex symbol. I'm sorry. She is. She can me. get it, but she ain't no sex symbol. You're a sex symbol to me, baby. If you ever, like, there if are ever there are this. there are women who are sexy to me, but I recognize them as 
just being average. They're they're not a sex symbol to everybody. They're not accepted within our culture as a sex symbol. You know, so well, Michelle Rodriguez is. So you better watch. She guy. likes women. So I, I guess uh, you can she was definitely as a woman. dating Zac Efron at one point. So she swings both ways. Yeah, so either date a woman or a white dude. (laughs) (laughs) Stupid. All right, so that's. But yeah, you see my point, right? That's definitely a don't. Okay, so here's a do. Uh, Do develop relationships with other characters. And what I mean by that is a lot of the times, as I said, coinciding with my first point, A lot of the black characters come off as bland and sometimes just there as background noise. Have them develop relationships with other characters that are actually meaningful um, in cultural exchanges. Yes, it's going to require a little bit of research to get the cultural exchanges down, but black people form relationships with other races on the daily, you know, white people, black people, Asian people, all that other stuff. You know, so it's not unheard of to what you call develop a relationship with other characters of other ethnicities or the same ethnicities it's just going to take a little bit more work on your part to figure out how the two people connect and a good example of this was reading the rebirth justice league run well just reading new 52 justice league as well and how Cyborg was taken from the Teen Titans and put on to the Justice League. Cyborg's relationship with the rest of the Justice League can be described as tenuous at best. Yeah. He doesn't relate to anybody whatsoever. There's no interesting conversation between him and Batman, Wonder Woman. He just has these really plain moments where he's either describing mission data or tech from the Watchtower but he feels more isolated from the other characters, and I don't. Oh my think, god, the Justice League movie! Oh. I I don't feel like he really connects with the characters, and the Justice League movie was also a great example. At least they tried to have him connect with Flash, but again, you saw that his relationship with the rest maybe of the two character. seconds. Yeah, his relationship to the rest of the characters was tenuous. It, it was it was boring. He didn't have any character moments as funny as Wonder Woman and Aquaman. He he didn't have those. It was just because I felt like the writer didn't want to take risk and risk the backlash. Just take risks with the characters, help them develop uh, relationships with other oh, characters, and it helps make a their great example. characters more two-dimensional. Go ahead. A great example of how to do Cyborg right, the Doom Patrol. That's how you do a black character right, especially a black character who go who goes by the name Cyborg. Oh, I'm, I'm missing out on that show, honestly. You gotta I, watch I, it. Yeah, I definitely it's, it's gotta. I definitely have to see that because uh, the Cyborg is actually going by his DCU design, so I definitely. I, I wasn't on board at first until somebody uh, put up a meme that showed that it was Cyborg's DCU design, which was my favorite design for Cyborg. I wasn't on board, board with his size. He is like kind a of a shrimp. tiny guy <laughs> in comparison to everybody else, but I like the way they do his powers and his, his strength and his, his personality, so I'm, I'm fine with it. Definitely. Could be worse. It could be uh, Smallville, Cyborg. Oh my goodness. That, that happened, right? Just give that Negro a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, wow, that was a thing. <laughs> that was a give him, give him some red glasses. <laughs> that really did happen. That that is a point in history. So yeah, all right. Let's give it another don't. Don't rely on these following stereotypes. Super smart. All right, with Please. no other characteristics. Please don't do super smart ever. I swear. I fucking. I don't like the super smart thing. I know it's kind of a pushback against the whole race realism thing, which those people can go fuck themselves, but honestly, every single black character introduced does not have to have an IQ of, like, 300 billion or whatever the fuck. (laughs) Alright? Because it doesn't fucking matter. Riri Williams is quote-unquote genius, and she's still stupid as fuck, so what's the point of giving her this character trait? She literally tried to assault Thanos. There are people 
newborns, toddlers, anybody in the fucking universe knows not to try and punch Thanos. And she was like, hey, yo, I'm Ruby Williams. I'm, I'm really out this bitch. I'm Iron Man. Yeah, and they try to excuse it as, oh, she's a teenager, but no. All the no. rest of the teenagers next to her didn't assault Thanos. So, yeah, try again. Yeah, so just don't do that, please. Like, at first, I was cool with the... Like, there are characters who are black and super intelligent, but they don't make it a important note to the audience to let them know, hey, this guy is a genius. He's smarter than everybody in the room. Oh, and he's black, too. You have uh, AJ from um, Fairy Odd Parents. He definitely gloated a lot about it. I know, like he, he he was he was a dick, yeah. But he, that that that's a, that's that's an addition to him yeah. being incredibly smart. Yeah. And he had adventures with Timmy Turner, outside of just the classroom, you know. Yeah. So, like he he had character arcs. I I. I'd, it's not that hard to write a black character who's smart and. It's just, oh, I hate it. I okay, hate it. So go on much. with your other stereotypes. <laughs> I hate <it> so much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry because I could talk about the, that stereotype all day long. Um, yeah, and definitely don't rely on the whole funky stereotype either because that's another stereotype. Uh, big gosh. Afro. Um, Medallion, all that, straight out of a black exploitation movie. Oh yeah, like an ode to black exploitation movies. I yeah, yeah don't. It do depends that shit. on your intention, but if that's if that's how, like I, I know I know oh, black gonna... dudes who wear the afro and they'll they'll have on maybe one link, but they're not speaking jive. They're not. Uh... I don't think I can get. I I don't know anybody like that to be honest. I mean, oh, I know, I know, I know. I see plenty of dudes to work at. A, oh, you know what? Another stereotype: dreadlocks and weed. Hate it, hate it. Not every person who has dreadlocks has weed on them. I'm not gonna speak to this because I think everybody I know that has dreadlocks also smokes weed. <laughs> see, <everyone laughs> not say that. I think I know. Every- yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's a stereotype. I think for a everybody reason, I, know I know that like has dreads because I used to have dreads at one point. All right. Everybody I know smokes weed, so it's like. Yeah, that, I mean the weed thing is a stereotype in itself. Not all black folks smoke. All right. Yeah, just ninety nine percent. All right. Fuck no, that. no, fuck no. Up. You're either smoking or you're drinking. All right. I do the drinking. Actually, I don't even I, drink. I, I stop drinking. Yeah, I can't drink no more. Too many black. I'm, I'm all energy drinks. Oh, you black out? How? Okay. I've How much only, you drinking? I only have two blackouts. <laughs> Well, not two blackouts. I only had one. At, actually, no, I had I, one I hope real. You're blacking out in your room and nope, it was in a club and it was not good. You I woke st- up with a carrot in your butt, didn't you? No, <laughs> I definitely woke up. I on woke some, up on some, some Dave, random Dave white Chappelle dude. Shit. I, I woke up on some <laughs> random white dude. And he was just like holding me from like falling down. Like you're the best I ever had. Nope. <laughs> but in Jesus Christ, that was a that was a night. But I I don't drink either. But yeah, don't don't do dread don't do dreads and weed. That's uh, it's not a great one either. Because yeah, not all black people smoke. Luke Cage season two, the horrible accents. All right, don't just don't don't just tell don't just give um. A voice sample of okay, this is how you're supposed to supposed to speak. Did you? Oh wait, my you god, did, man! Oh, you, didn't, no, don't. <laughs> you didn't like the Jamaican accents? I thought, they were horrible. Like, and the accents in Black Panther were horrible too. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. I thought they were fine. I like. No, they, I they were Luke bad. Cage. They I were like bad. The you can do. Upon the second viewing, I feel bad now. The, the first viewing, I was like, okay, but the second viewing, I was like, oh my god. They say this I'm faster terrible. than Usain Bolt. I, I, I don't know. I, I enjoyed it. But yeah, bad accents are a thing. And bad weave. But that's, those are a lot of dotes. Anyways, continue with your other stories. Um, trying to, trying to uh, 
creating characters and holding them to a European standard of uh, costume design. Look, I, 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 we, we like natural hair, all right? Mm. We like being comfortable in our own clothes, okay? Um, I, I don't know what to tell you because I, I kind of get pissed off when I see a black female character with straight hair. And um, maybe that has to do with, so I've worked with artists and I worked with this one girl and I gave her clear instructions on what this female character was supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. And she was, I, th I think I showed you the image. I have it on Instagram, but um, it's the one where I'm holding the camera and you had that the naked girl beside me. Um, she had, the, she had the, two, the two pom pom hairs. Hmm. Uh, let me look this up because it's it's a little. Uh, you're I'll, I'll, with... send, I'll I'll send you the link because I uploaded it to the game cargo uh, Instagram. Da, da, da. Let me put that in the chat. Uh, I gotta hate Skype updates. Do 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 do. There we go. Let's All right, it's in this chat. All right, this better not be porn. Oh. I can't promise that. You know me. Oh, There's yeah, a little sorry. bit of it's, it's that one, yeah. Yeah. So she originally had straight hair. Um, she didn't have the tattoo. Yeah, that's right. Ah. I do. I do remember the original one. Yeah, and and the black guy didn't have the cornrows. I'm like, I gave you clear instructions. I even gave you a reference, reference images. So what's this? <laughs> I mean, it's because it's something they're not experienced with. Oh, and heads up to artists who uh, who draw black characters. Don't be afraid to draw them black. Why are you drawing these characters so light? I don't know, man. It's hard. Is that is is because of the aesthetic, or I, I, I'm not an artist, so I don't know. But yeah, me either. I've had to tell I've had to tell some artists to darken up that complexion. Let me take me to Brown Town. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a, like a anal porn. That does sound like anal <laughs> porn. It really does. But Chad, you know, you know what I mean. Like, <sighs> no, I don't know what you're saying. Light yeah. is right. To There's a actually of a little bit of a controversy going on with Ruby Williams because she's finally getting her animated debut. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, she she looks um very uh different, very different. I I mean, for me knowing what it takes to animate some people's hair, mm -hmm. I I think that uh, this was done probably to save production costs. Save time. Yeah, yeah. cuz her hair in the comics is kind of wild. I'm guessing it would be hard to do, but at the same time, it is Disney. They probably got a shit ton of money. They can, yeah. They can definitely, even if put their more animations effort. look horrible, they can put more effort into, you know, representing the character, especially in her first animated appearance. Yeah. So yeah, the European beauty standards because a lot of people, a lot of people see the European beauty standard as the default. You know, so you you think beautiful woman, you think blonde, blue eyes. And I hate it. I hate it. Yeah, it's not my beauty standard, but give me give me brown all day long. Give me brown and curvy, please. Brown, curvy. I long curly hair. Of course. I prefer a big kinky afro. Oh, Maybe. one that you can pull out a gun, pull out a small pistol, like in that Pam Greer movie, Foxy Brown. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing like that. I mean, Foxy like Brown is an example of how to do a black female character right. All right, I'm going to put that out there. You, uh, I think I watched Foxy Brown. Yeah, you watched Foxy Brown, and you, you, I, I believe I, you said you liked the, uh, you know, how she got raped and just got back up and killed those two motherfuckers. Yeah, I liked that she did, you know, the retaliation. I didn't particularly enjoy the rape scene. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Well, we're talking about the character, not the not the movie itself, because 
uh, yeah, so I, I'm actually scripting a podcast episode with my girl. We're going to cover black sportation movies, and she doesn't like them so far. <laughs> I mean, I get... Look, man, I'm not the biggest fan of them either. You like them for historical reason, but that doesn't make them good. Well, I like them because there's, some of them are so bad they're good, and some of them, like, you, as a creator myself, I can take away the good and be like, okay, the bad was common back there, all right? I, I guess. So I'm, I'm like, how can we update these type of films now? Because there's a movie called Trouble Man. He is basically the black James Bond, and it's actually a very good film. It's not black exploitation at all, but it's considered black exploitation. And the, the movie, oh, my God, if they made a remake, they would have, they would have, box office gold are you sure because they remade superfly we don't talk about that oh i'm just saying superfly. <laughs> you know <laughs> they, they literally about. remade superfly and here's the thing about superfly <laughs> superfly was incredibly relevant for its time you cannot remake that now and create relevancy without it being satire of some sort yeah definitely like on like saints row level um because Superfly, you, you, because the pimp stereotype, it was around back then. I'm not sure if it was common before or it became common after. Right. But the the character, uh, I forgot, the, his character's name is Blood something. But not only was he a pimp, he had, characteristic, he had characteristics that made you identify with his struggle. And then you had him doing parkour, you had the martial arts so it wasn't just like okay this character is a, a pimp he's a you know that's the end of because i i one of my main characters in uh what, my universe he is an ex pimp and it get, gets brought up but that's not the only that's not the only element to him you know that's not the only fact to him oh wow superfly was an entirely black film huh Oh. Yeah, I, th- I think it was written and directed by Black Dude. Yeah, it was written we, by We're Ronald. talking about the original, right? <laughs> yeah, Ron O'Neill. Oh, yeah. well then that's something. Yeah, have you seen it? I have not seen the original. It, it's worth watching at least once. Um, I, would, I wouldn't probably watch it again, but it was nice to know, okay, I've gotten this out of the way. I'm, I'm watching more and more Black Square Days of films. I can understand why it was historically praised. Right. I'll give it a watch. Uh, yeah, just, just one watch. Like, you could be working at the time and just watch it, so... Because there are some pretty good dialogue and scenes. Hmm. Alright, so that was a lot of the... Any other stereotypes? Ah, let me think about that. Um, Stop killing the black people first. There we go. Yeah, that's why that's why I like that zombie movie that that recently came out. What was it called? Um, was it a uh, Daisy? No, produced no. By, it was produced by J.J. Abrams. Um, let's see, Overlord, Overlord. Overlord. Yeah, and it turned out the black char- the black character was actually the main character. The trailers never revealed that, but yeah, and the movie had. The movie had stereotypes, but it wasn't... Oh, well, not stereotypes, but archetypes. Yeah. However, you had the main character who was... He's this humble dude. You know, he's meek. But he's not... He's not a... Uh, Finn's bitch ass. Sorry. <laughs> oh, uh, he's not Finn's bitch. Somebody doesn't like Finn. Surprise, I, don't, I don't like surprise. him at all. That's, that's how you don't do a black character. Um, but I can get to that later. Uh, so this guy... Bilingual, kind heart, loves animals, but he will kill when necessary. Like, great movie. Gotta watch it. Gotta watch it. Um, as for Finn. Oh, let's see. He doesn't like oh, Finn. I'm, I'm gonna, start I'm with gonna go soldier. ahead and get comfortable because okay, this is gonna be a okay, while. I, I was interested because you had Finn. Okay, soldier. He's gonna start off as a, as a stormtrooper. Okay, cool. Oh, it turns out that he's, he's just a janitor. <laughs> yeah, that was a little shitty. <laughs> and he doesn't even like being a stormtrooper. Why doesn't he like being a stormtrooper? 
I don't know because he, he doesn't like violence. Then why become a stormtrooper? Why become a soldier? Why did he become the janitor? Was he forced into it? I, I, I don't. Oh, and then you got him chasing after the white woman. Idolization of white culture, white women. That's another um, Oh, don't stereotype. worry. They fix that. Yeah. Now he's he's got some Chinese girl chasing after him. Um, I, I, love, I, love, I love the chick, though. Kelly Marie Tran is Kelly Vietnamese. Marie Tran, I love her. I love her. Is, I love myself. I love myself a chubby Asian chick. All right. Damn, you just called chubby. <laughs> I believe she's Vietnamese. I don't care what she is. We're going to order Chinese food, and then we're going to fuck. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Transparent. What's that Kanye line? What's that Kanye line? Uh... Eat that pussy out with sweet and sour sauce. Oh, yeah. Eating this <laughs> pussy. All I need is sweet and sour sauce. <laughs> what a guy. Uh, Let me see. A do. Let's go with a do. Um, let's see. I can't think of one off the top of my head. Um, do make characters like Finn. Plot twist. Don't. Finn was originally white. <laughs> Don't make. Finn. Not a lot of people know that. Don't make Finn. Uh, let's see. Career paths. Okay, so this is going to be interesting. Uh, right character. Not every black character needs to be a rapper or a musician. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, they don't need to. Like, give them some interesting careers. You know, mix it up. Try and uh, see how. Again, this is going to take... Or a basketball player. Please don't make them a basketball player. Like, this is going to take more uh, research from your, um, from your local black person. Um, but figure out black POVs from different types of uh, jobs. Uh, such as, I don't know, being a, a clerk at a hospital. Or being a, a, point a, star. a car rental... Um, I don't know. Car salesman. Uh, yeah, car salesman. Something like that. Yeah, car salesman. Uh, something like that. You know, uh, because you can get more interesting stories out of these. And again, this goes back to giving them the the different roles. I said earlier to give them more outlandish roles, but if you're gonna go for a more grounded approach, uh, try a black teacher, black school principal. You know, like I don't know lightning. about the black teacher and school principal. I've seen that several times before. I mean. Still, it's something. It's better than rapper or drug dealer. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I kind of grouped them all together because I I've just seen them so much. Well, then let's. Uh, what other roles do you think? What, what else? What um, other type of? Because there's been a lot of roles. You well, could make. I've, a, I've never seen a movie about a black filmmaker. That would be interesting. I'm actually writing one. Just gonna plug myself into that. <laughs> but uh <laughs> Yeah, a black filmmaker. Uh you can do movies about I don't know, a, a stockbroker, black stockbroker that isn't Pursuit of Happiness. That was a pretty good movie, by the way. A martial artist. Ooh, a martial artist starring Michael Jai White. Michael Jai White, he's the go to. Yeah. Yeah, to or or Khalif um not Khalif, what the hell is his name? The, the guy that does the uh, Caparea? Yeah, Khalif Crowder. Okay, it is Khalif Crowder. Yeah, Crowder. He gets so wasted in his roles. He's he's always getting beat up or killed off. I mean, yeah, he's he's like just, y'all going to do y'all going to do him like that. Okay, he's just he's just a guy you want to do kickflips. But I good. saw him in a Disney Channel, so I think he was playing some kind of robot. He just... took him out too. But he yeah he he's everywhere if you know where to look. Khalif Crowder. No, that's well. That's a different dude entirely. No, Crowder is the guy. I think he he wants to play Blade. Uh, let me see, because I forgot his daggone first name. I'm sorry, Latif Crowder. Damn, I was I was getting the the name. Oh no, up. I'm thinking about somebody else. Yeah, Latif Crowder is. Uh... Yeah, Latif Crowder is the guy we we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, he does capoeira, and I mean that's a rare. Uh, martial art. Ooh, that's another do. Uh, had them use uh, other martial arts. Okay, so, I was thinking about Maurice Crump. My bad. 
but yeah, yeah. Definitely. So some other if you got not, action not every star, black person does boxing. Yeah, not at all. I mean, I like, do boxing, but that's that's yeah, I, I do. I did it for a little bit too, but that's not the oh, point. I'm gonna fight you. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the point you know uh, yeah there's other there's other fighting styles and um look into you know what a good example um street fighter 3 who's that guy uh he he's like he's dressed up all classy and uh dudley 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 yes i call him even Duds. though there are white fans who will argue nah he's indian he's not black that, that dude's that dude definitely black. black he's black let's fight like, like there gentlemen. aren't any black people in britain Come on. Yeah, there's plenty of black people in Britain. Like, there's a ton of black people in Britain. Um, so that's one of the do's. Let's get into a don't. Uh, hmm. Hmm. What can we say that there's a don't for? I mean, I guess we could always bring up slang, but that's obvious. Slang is pretty obvious, but... <sighs> Should we bring up the N-word? No. No, I think that's pretty obvious. I mean, if you're going to use the N-word, there has to be context to it. Yeah, just a little bit. Don't Otherwise, just it it's out. just going to be uh, a form of comedic relief, like in a Quentin Tarantino movie. Even though there is context when he uses the word at times. Did you know that uh, the kitchen scene, his wife wasn't supposed to be black in Pulp Fiction? I did not know that. But I know that his wife was black in Pulp Fiction. Yeah, yeah. She wasn't originally supposed to be black, but Samuel had a problem with um was this Tarantino saying the N word. So he made the wife black. I, I did not know that. Wow. <laughs> and Sam- you for telling me that. I'm I'm like a huge Quentin Tarantino nerd and I did not know that. So Yeah, Samuel is like wow. that doesn't make it okay. It's pretty funny. That's actually pretty funny and kind of, you know. But the scene was funny. I thought the scene yeah, was funny. Yeah, I thought the scene was pretty good. Pretty well executed. Um, Do you see a sign that on says, my garage that says dead storage? Am I allowed to say that word? I'm not sure. Uh, no, 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 I mean. I, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it alone. We'll yeah, leave we'll leave it alone. alone. But, uh, yeah, that. Uh, <laughs> so don't, I guess, don't use the N word all willy nilly. I know you're writing a black character and whatnot. Uh, yeah, quite a few of us say the N word, but, but it's it's definitely look not at how we say the N word. It's not like a conjunction or a, a prepositional phrase. You a don't just you don't just know? throw it in the middle of a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> so, so be careful about that. Um, you know, just just um, be mindful. Uh, Dude, play good rap music. Oh well, that's not. Like character specific, but um, I, guess. I just hate it when they find the most garbage rap song to play during a scene with a black character. Black and lightning's why play back. Rap music with a black character at all? Like we we invented every genre of music. All right. Black lightning's back. I hated that. Ugh. it's actually pretty cringeworthy. But hey, we're we're getting there. We're 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 almost we're almost at a promised land. Actually, no, that that no, should be not. that should be actually in a don't section. All right, so for don'ts, um, music. Well, not all black people actually like hip hop. I know this is gonna come as a yeah, shock. Quite a few too. of us like. Quite a few of us prefer jazz, R and B, blues, rock, country. Metal. Not me, but I'm riding on a horse. I don't know the rest of the words of that song. Can't nobody that, tell uh, me that the, um, no Nas X song. Yeah, I I heard it once and I've never listened to it again. Can't nobody tell me nothing. Hey, yo, Billy Ray Cyrus killed that shit. He kills everything. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, don't a uh, don't would be um, do not do not just make the black people like hip hop. You know, there's more. There's more expansive, diverse tastes in uh, black that, music. That's probably taste. why I like the Moisa character because she wasn't just hip hop. You know, she she was like black music. Um, I say if you're gonna do hip hop, at least do some of the more less obvious ones, like a tribe called Quest, please. Oh my god! Don't get me started on how Superfly replaced uh, what's his name, but he used. 
the Superfly remake, the soundtrack to it was done by Future. Mm. I and would you like to know who did the original soundtrack to the original? Sure. Okay. I don't know. I'm looking it up right now. It's been a while. <laughs> I thought you knew it off the fly. <laughs> Curtis Mayfield. That's his name. Oh, okay. I knew it was Curtis something, but I didn't want to say the wrong last name. You didn't want yeah, to say Curtis, Curtis Mayfield. So you're telling me that Future is on the same level as Curtis Mayfield. He's not even the same level as, I don't know. Not Curtis even the Ball. same dimension. Yeah, the future's Future is like a part of this retarded dimension. Ooh, the R word. <laughs> Careful. The R word, I'm People sorry, are going to get guys. mad sorry. at you. Oh, oh. They're going to get mad at me. I'm, I'm, my bad, my bad, I can't use the R word. Um, but yeah, if you're gonna go hip hop, at least, at least you know, pick some, like, do some research on hip hop. It's it's not all trap music, it's not all future, it's not all Little Nas X. There's actually a rapper called Nas. You should look him up. He's pretty good. Funny enough, um, white people are more hip to actual rap music. I call it actual rap music because. What they play on the radio, what's popular now is garbage. So actual rap music, white people are more hip to that when it comes to creating soundtracks. More so than what black people choose. I'm not sure. I'd have to look uh, research that. Yo, I was watching this <laughs> Liam Neeson movie. I think it's called Run All Night, and they were playing Nas. Uh, they had this black kid singing a Nas. but uh, I, The scene is kind of cringeworthy, but it's like... It's a kid, so yeah. I mean, but uh, I think that a good example of the diversity in black music would be actually we're gonna keep it nasty. The that's the song that was played. Yeah, nasty. the the, the um, what you call it? A good example of the diversity of black music taste is actually I'm gonna go with keep with Nas, and when he was performing with, I believe it was Trans Siberia. No, <sighs> hold on. Forms, because uh, I wanted to. I don't think it was the. It was the National Symph- Symphony Orchestra, and he was doing uh, a lot of his greatest hits from Illmatic. And it, instead of the hip hop instrumentals, it was over orchestrated music. There's a lot of diverse tastes in black music, so do a little bit of research. You know, uh, just see what's hot in uh the 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 black realm you know and don't go with the the easiest song to grab if you're gonna have them like music have them like something from a deep cut era like onyx or immortal technique or mers yeah i just said mers i did i did it here's a here's a good example of what we're talking about as far as um pandering it's not the whole it's not the entire scene but um so the scene plays out these cows are at a uh movie theater and it's like this disney movie and one cow is going you the cow and the other cow is going no you the cow and then you have two cows watching and say hey they really understand us they really get us No, no please we don't talk like that. Not yeah. all of us. Yeah, that's uh, that'd be in the don'ts. Also, do not just just don't assume that we all know slang because not all of us come from the hood. Not all of us come from the ghetto. Not all of us come from impoverished places in general. We and that's another thing. I hate. I we we go. We talk about urban. Oh God! Why why does everything related to black, black characters got to be Urban. urban or ebony or urban. Well, I, I want, why can't I get a guy who's like a character who's like this uh, trust fund baby who's a, a, a billionaire play? But that, that's kind of like that, that's kind of why I uh, took to the character of um, in Pacific Rim 2 who the actor who plays Finn in Star Wars. He plays the main character in Pacific Rim 2. I, I don't know his name, but. I don't care because John he played Boyega? Finn. I don't care because he played Finn. God he ruined damn. any any love that I would have given him for wow. playing Finn. 
Do you know um, John Boyega? He's a nice British guy. He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy actor. Wow. Okay. E- even in this Pacific Rim Two movie, he was a nice guy actor. Like he's not. He's not intimidating. I I don't know why people Photoshop him as Blade because I I can't see him being intimidating at all. Mm. Or replacing Wesley Snipes. Yeah. Yeah, that's not, but, that's not happening. Yeah. Um. So his character, he, as the son of Idris Elba, you know, spoiler alert: Idris Elba's character in Pacific Rim One dies. Uh. And Pacific Rim too, you have the son. He's like this playboy. He's rich, but um, he's kind of dragged into fighting, you know, against these uh, kaiju. Right. And it, it's it's uh, it's it, it's a different type of character. It's a different type of black character. You yeah. Know? Because we come from all different walks. It's of It's kind of like Seth Rogen when he played the Green Hornet. Yeah. That, that's the best uh, comparison I can make. It's gonna it's gonna definitely take a while for a lot of these things to sink in, but these are definitely a lot of good do's and don'ts, and especially for the one where they come from different walks of life, because that one's kind of because I, I I relate to that personally because I come from the suburbs. I've always been from the suburbs. I've Same been, here. As a military brat, so the hood freaks me out. Yeah, I, I, like, there I, are so many black people in the hood. Yeah, it scares me. <laughs> I, I can't walk around with my my, expensive, <laughs> my AirPods in around the hood. Fuck. Oh, God. Are you kidding me? They look so ridiculous on people. That shit is the best meme though. When they have the waves, put some cords in those. <laughs> <laughs> they have the little holsters that have cords, you know, because and they sell the cords back to them. That shit is hilarious. Oh my god, people are stupid. But yeah, let's let's wrap this up. We've been gone right, for yeah, a little bit. I'm hungry. And I, I am definitely tired. I gotta get up in the morning. So yeah, that's a lot of the do's and don'ts for writing black characters. I, I really hope somebody finds this useful one day when they unbury this this podcast from the uh the collapsed structures that was our society when, you know, the oceans rise up. Uh hopefully when they're writing new stories they can uh find our tips useful. And use them. Eh, maybe. You know, maybe a little bit. You know, at least I hope you found some sort of use in this. What do you uppity Negroes know about writing black characters? Uh, probably not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, it's time to sign out. I'm Goldwill. Electronic Jack, a.k.a. Linwood Storm. And we will see you next time on Black Medium. Peace out.